Hello and welcome back to episode two of the lockdown challenge um, on Championship Manager 9798. Um, if you're new here or enjoying the content, please do drop a like uh, on, on the video. Please drop a sub to the channel as well. That's all great. Let's me know you're enjoying the content and want to see more of it. And without further ado, let's crack on because I'm mindful of two things today. Firstly, the first video, uh, episode one, was a bit longer than I wanted. Secondly, you may see that I'm in the 24th September on the date at the top of the screen there. I've gone on a little bit further than really I wanted to. I did record an episode yesterday and when I went to edit it, my microphone didn't turn on so I recorded absolutely zero sound. So I've flown through after that point to get to where I wanted to record the third episode and I'm having to basically do episode two as a real catch up. So I'm going to quickly fly through the things that I vaguely remember talking about yesterday. So we firstly talked about the transfers. So there's been a lot of transfer business and a few tactical tweaks. So we... Um, we brought in Michael Twist on a free transfer, Man United youth player. Uh, he's doing quite well so far. We've got Graham Tomlinson, I think he's injured, just come back from injury. Again, doing okay. Um, ex again, ex-Man United player, but uh, very good signing. Um, and I did mention as well, I I'm thinking about putting a um, compilation video of you know, all the best players, different sort of price points, that sort of thing. Um, so if that's something that interests you, drop it down in the comments, let me know if that's a video you'd want to see. Um, so that's something in the pipeline. We also signed Chris Kiwami. I think a few of these I might have touched upon episode one. I might have even bid for him in episode one. He's not quite firing just yet, but with the tactical tweaks, he might still develop. But we've only got one striker now as opposed to two, I think. I might be wrong with that. Um, we've got Jeff Brazier, a Z-list celebrity. Um, you know, he's probably ringing at my door right now. Uh, if you know those adverts, he's in there. He's 18-year-old midfielder. He's not really one as a first team. He's... Um, He's in there just to sort of pad out the numbers, really. Uh, Jonathan Turnbull. Um, I'm going to pop up in a minute the uh, the objectives for this for this season. So he's part of that. So we had to sign a Doncaster player, play him 20 times. He's played six times so far. We've changed system, which means a midfielder or forward right. I don't think fits within it. I might be wrong. Um, I've changed it a few times. I can't remember which one I ended up on yesterday, but he's there. We'll get him to 20, and then he's he's out on his arse basically. Uh, we've got Christopher Laurent, he's a free transfer French guy, defensive midfielder, we need a defensive midfielder, another one I sign quite regularly, doing the job I know he can do. Anthony Betterton will come in in goal at some point, but we've got Andre Renza playing quite well, but he's another one who's very good um, at most levels, and even if you don't, he, his value goes up a little bit and you can sell him off quite easily. He normally goes to a big club, yeah, I've got a few of those, got Tomlinson, Twist, have all got big clubs, we'll probably won't see out the season with them. Ronnie Warwick, another ex-Man United youth player. Sometimes starts at Man United, I think, on the game. But he was a free transfer here, so we snapped him up. Um, we've got Andrew Duncan. I am flying through these, like I say, just because I want to get through this intro bit a, a lot quicker than yesterday. So if you want to see the players, you know, just drop a pause at that point and have a look. But we've got Andrew Duncan, another free transfer, another ex-Man United player. Again, starting off quite nicely, but we won't probably see him for the whole season. We've got Bjorn Heidenstrom. Um, another objective player, but also a class, classic, legendary uh, championship manager, 97-98 player. Um, can play in defence or midfield. So I think we've currently got him playing in defence in a back three. But again, I might have changed that. So he might be back in the midfield now. He, he's flitted about all over the place. But as you can see, he, he's performing well. So he performs well in both positions. Maybe just not in that defensive midfielder role because he hasn't got the, the anchor. I think he's only got a one for anchor on there, which means he can't fully play defensive midfield. Uh, in the editor, if you're familiar with the editor. Uh, we've got Juan Carlos Centurion to play in the attacking midfield spot. Again, very good. I signed him for Aberdeen uh, on a save during lockdown, actually, last year. Um, and, yeah, he did very he did a great job for me. I think he ended up getting an 11-month injury and I had to sort of release him. But he was getting a bit old. No one wanted him, that sort of thing. But And I had better, I was able to attract better players by that point. But as a starting point, very good. Uh, Rory Ginty, just to give us some um, options on the wing. Again, I've had him in a few different teams, normally losing pretty early, but we won't haven't got a big club here on his claws, so he'd probably be okay, but we'll see. I don't know if he's going to feature too much anymore. Uh, David Rowcastle, similar. We need an extra right midfielder. He's done okay, if not amazing, but again, I don't know if he quite fits into what we're doing right now. Uh, we've got Jose Maria Baquero, the ex-Barcelona player, although it doesn't show it in his club. Again, he's 34. If you've seen the retirement home... Um, blog save i highly recommend it um he signs players all like this i think it's over 32 i think or maybe 34 even and just tries to win stuff with them he's doing one in holland he's done one before in 
I think it was in England. Um, and then the second one now, which I've been really reading, is um, in Holland. And yeah, loving it. And I can't remember if I mentioned it in episode one or if it was part of the recording yesterday. My schedule with reading those blogs is the weekend. That's when I'm up with my daughter when she's she sleeps quite badly during the night at the moment when, she, when she's up. When I'm waiting for her to go off, I'll just read, plough through a week's worth of blogs and... Yeah, it's kind of the routine now, so I can't watch videos during the night, so because I wake everyone up or wake my wife up and end up with broken nose or um, keep my daughter awake, so I can't do that. So I just read the blogs, and then finally we signed Mick Quinn, uh, another one from the retirement home. We signed him a little bit further down the line because the strikers weren't quite um, doing the initial tactics tweaks, weren't quite doing it, but we brought him in because we know he can score goals because I've seen it in the retirement home blog. Um, shout out Dave Black for bringing him to my attention the Mika that's what we're referring him to from now on the Mika that is his name so we brought him in on a free and we'll see what he can do fixture wise we have played quite a few fixtures because I did play a few before episode 2 just to get the transfers in and sorted that I wanted to do and also I then played on to get ready for episode 3 but here we are that's where we are so we've drew initially 2 all with um, Watford I think we were 2-0 up in that game uh, yeah we were and then minute same minute or minute later they got one back and then towards the end they equalised but they're high flying in this league expected to get promoted so not entirely surprising we then got humbled in the league cup 5-1 the way to Charlton now we don't need to worry too much we need to get promoted this year but we don't need to worry too much about next season I don't think because I don't think part, uh, season 2 of this challenge involves us being too involved with Fulham and trying to make our way in division 1 or yeah the championship if you want it in new money um, but Mark Bright, Clive Mendonca grabbing the goals there and we weren't really in the game. We got a late consolation at the end through Mike Conroy, I think it was. Uh, we then grabbed our first win of the season, a 2-0 home win against uh, Northampton. Mike Conroy, probably my best hope of getting 30 goals part of the challenge. He's on 11 out of 12 so far, so he's doing very nicely. He's not far off. He's a third of the way already and we're only in September. So very, very happy with that and a good few performances across the board, apart from Jonathan Turnbull, the guy from Don Doncaster, but that's not too surprising. Um, we then got a bit of pride back in the London derby against Charlton in the return leg at Craven Cottage. Um, another goal from Mike Conroy, but we were never getting back in the actual tie. We, we probably deserved two to a degree, um, but I mean, we needed four. So we'd have had to score every shot on target, but that doesn't happen generally for you. The AI can do it, but not us so much. Um, a disappointing two-all uh, draw with Plymouth. I think this is one of the games we said we were coming back for, I think, um, four episodes two or three I can't really remember um, but we yeah we came back and it wasn't the best we went went down early on uh, went 2-0 down pretty early on uh, from a guy that we actually wanted to sign at one point makes the Man United player but we've got Tomlinson and Twist TNT so we didn't need him we grabbed the late draw uh, well 20, 20 minutes to go we just couldn't rally enough to to pull it back to to where we needed to be uh, we then lost to Carlisle at home, which was very disappointing, especially when Rory Delap scored. And they also had Jason Cook, another player we wanted. But we were just kind of loaded in that area, so we didn't really need him. I was hoping maybe he wouldn't sign um, for anyone and he'd be there if we lost to Twist or Tomlinson as a you know ready-made replacement. But that's now gone. Um, we were then going to come back for the Luton game um, on one of the episodes because I've got it written in my notes and I'm reading my notes right now in front of me uh, if my phone unlocks. So we did, we did score initially, but it was disallowed. Um, they immediately pulled one back. Uh, well, no, not pulled one back. Actually, went one nil up. But we rallied to go four one up. And in fact, if we go to the match stats, um, where are we here? Um, we we pulled one. But we, we got back. No, it's not the match stats. The match incidents. We went four one up. But then very late on, they pulled it back to four three just to make it a bit twitchy. But we managed to hold on just long enough. Um, we then had a 2-1 home win against Blackpool. All the while, the tactics are changing in the background because I wasn't convinced of what we were doing. Um, Mike Phelan there, the uh, Man United assistant manager, didn't realise he was playing for them at that point. They've got Jim Quinn. We didn't have Mick Quinn at this point. We've obviously got him now, but he wasn't there at this point. But as you can see, Conroy grabbing a, couple, uh, grabbing a goal there. Hydenstrom grabbing one as well. After we'd gone behind very early, but pulled one back relatively early again. Um... The Mika came in just after this game, and we also sold Herrera to Bristol City, um, who were top at the time, uh, which is a bit strange because, as you can see further down, we do play them in a minute. Uh, then we had a one-all draw away to Grimsby. As you can see, a very, very meh start to the season. We missed a penalty on three minutes, but then he scored. I don't think it was a rebound. I think it was a separate highlight, if you like. It's not quite FM, but um, another. It was a, it was a separate attack, I think, a different phase of play. So. 
yeah not too sure uh, they pulled one back pretty quickly and then not much happened uh, the rest of the game but my notes say we're going to struggle to get a player to 30 goals but obviously Conroy behind the scenes of the results was still doing the job we then scraped a 4-3 win against Warsaw big high scoring games a lot of them they're either really big high scoring games or they're really drab like 0-0 one alls um, but Walsall, yeah, it was a bit of a scare at the end, but we edged a 4-3 win, and they were near the top. All these teams were above us, obviously, because our start was a bit poor, but also um, they were all just doing teams that were doing quite well and probably teams that are going to be challenging for the top sort of six places, um, which we need to be in to have a chance of going up. Uh, then it was top team Bristol City, and they obviously we had, they had Robbie Herrera from us for 300k, so that's good money. They've got Alex Notman on loan from United, which is going to be a very good signing for them. I was hoping to be able to bring him in at some point, but maybe in the next team we go to. Is that Michael Ball? No, it's Michael Bell. Um, Sean Dyche, Barnsley manager. Um, that's another video I'm looking at maybe is uh, Sean Gota, Man City legend. Another video I'm looking at is um, looking at all the managers or people that are still in this game who are still active in the in the game today. So people maybe managing in the Premier League or Division 1, etc., who are players in this or... Or whatever so i'm gonna that's something i've got in the background of my mind as well i need to put that together and actually figure that out and it's not just in england i want to try and have a look at some of the other divisions as well but a good result there against bristol city and then we wrapped it up with a lovely 4-0 win away at preston uh with david moyes another one there to think about um who have they got michael appleton i think is a manager at the moment very young there a few names i recognize in there michael jackson coming off the bench you know didn't manage to moonwalk his way into a goal but we won 4-0 and let's have a look at where that leaves us in the table I think it's fairly healthy now so we've got a game in hand on Blackpool who are top but as you can see we played Blackpool we played Bristol we played Watford we played Carlisle we played Walsall we played Northampton I think so a lot of those are teams we played and they're all in the top half obviously we played Preston Grimsby Luton a few of those have slipped down now uh, who else we played Plymouth as a shock and they were near the top when we played them they're now near the bottom but yeah we're doing okay we've got 24 goals 14 conceded not bad we're near the top of goal scored but we're also pretty high on the goals conceded but I'm hoping with the new tactic that we've employed uh, which is this a 4 4 2 3 one it lets us get all the options in here turn balls obviously out of the mo in at the moment for Tomlinson who's just gone his way back from injury We've got the one striker, but we've got the three good attacking midfielders behind, and we've got Laurent and Hardenstrom behind doing quite well. We do need to get some better fullbacks. Um, they luckily I hadn't sold them before, but Brevet's okay, but he's not doing enough. I've got an eye on someone. Um, in fact, I'll show you who that is. Uh, another good player to sign in this game, Lee Hughes, um, defender midfielder left. I don't know if he's actually ever became anything. I don't think so. He's got a big fee release clause. He's only 19k, but we're not big enough to trigger that clause just yet. But that's how our, um, our, our what shortlist looks at the moment. They're players we've got potentially an eye on. Maybe for Fulham, maybe the next challenge. I'm not too sure. But a few of those will change with the next challenge, I'm, I imagine, if it's a bigger team, hopefully. But we're going to do a quick save just because I like to do that because things... It's an old game. It does sometimes like to be a bit... on my And, my, and it's an old laptop. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're going to kick on. We're in a... Oh, we're in the windscreens game here. So we've got Walsall. So it's a, I think it's a group, but we're just, we're just going to stick. We're trying to build some momentum with the team and the players that are playing. Tomlinson's on 80%, so he's not quite ready to come back just yet. We have got Moody, Lawrence, Trollop, Collins all wanted now. So hopefully they'll be clearing out soon. So that'll help with the, um, the transfer balance part of the challenge, uh, which I flicked up at the start again. So we're 300 in, out, uh, and we're... What, about 80k in so we're currently succeeding we've got a little bit of wiggle room if we do want to actually buy someone um i'm not sure if we're going to but um turnbull oh and the doncaster player goes straight through silences the critics and he scores his first goal of the season for fulham okay it's in the windscreen shield which i is it the auto glass at this point i'm not too sure as i think that was centurion uh, makes it 2-0 from midfield so the attacking midfielders definitely contribute with goals in this tactic um, Conroy I think is still pretty involved so yeah so just keeping the momentum try and keep some wins coming try and get the team morale up morale is very important on the game as well probably not so much as it is in FM22 uh, as I'm finding with my Arsenal save at the moment my beta save with Arsenal um, just actually just won the league but we had a few blips where morale wasn't quite great and we allowed Manchester United back in um, into that save into that league but 
they bottled it right at the end. They lost, I think they lost to they drew with Wolves and they lost to Brentford, and that basically we but we nearly bottled it as well. We had to go and beat who was it? Bottom? No, not bottom. They weren't bottom. They were seventeenth place. Burnley nil nil draw. Couldn't couldn't break them down, and then had to go to Leeds who had had a pretty decent season and and I think we had to get a draw at least. A draw would have made it. Man United were able to level on points, but we managed to go out and secure the win. I think it was like four 0 in the end. So, um, I don't think I'm going to be showing that save on on YouTube because I, I have just um, when I play it is in the evening. I don't get a chance to record in the evening as we just make it three uh, nil. Emphatic finish from Centurion just before the end of the game, and I should have made a sub, but we haven't because I've just been waffling away about FM22. But we'll, we'll end that FM22 talk. I am going to try and do some stuff, but not probably not a full on play through Jim Walker in goal there who obviously played for West Ham um Modja Boli I've got my eye on he's a great striker especially at the lower levels Mark Wright you know trading in Essex for Birmingham there as we end that game let's have a look what's happening in the league so Watford have drew um nothing that hurts us too badly I think we dropped down to fourth now yeah but with a game in hand uh so that's not too bad but we need to keep the momentum up and we do have another game. So what I'll do, I'll pause that here for now and we'll come back for the next game. Okay, so here we are. We're back for the uh, the next game in the league. It's away to Bournemouth, another team who'd eventually, eventually end up in the Premier League. Eddie Howe at right back. I need a right back, actually. Might be someone to look at. Uh, they've got Paul Dickov up front. I think he's a free transfer on the game at the start. He is. They've, he's had one game for them. Mike Dean, the old referee in the middle there, that should hopefully he's not playing because he could influence it a little bit. Jamie Vincent, yeah, I think it, Reading was he? No, Palace. Um, I think I had him on my old, the, the game, a few games before this. They got J Jimmy Glass, the old goalkeeper that scored on the last day of the season. Was it Carlisle on loan? Scored from a corner, kept him up. I think that's him. Um, so we've got, yeah, we've got Bournemouth. So in amongst the news between the games, we're just going to keep the same team. Uh, the guy on the, the Doncaster, I can't remember his name, did okay, so we'll keep him in. Um, Yao Pinto signed for Real Madrid. There was a few Barcelona signings. There was a few Athletic Bilbao. Oh, we've got a red card after. We're just going to keep it as is. Um, as Dickoff scores. <laughs> We're going to... Yeah, so a few Barcelona signings. A few Athletic Bilbao signings. Nothing huge. But we also saw um, Alan Kerbishy resign as manager of Charlton. And we also saw uh, Mark McGee sacked as manager of Wolves. So a few managerial changes in I think the championship or division one as it would have been back then in the old money um, but we've got back in the game and we've actually taken the lead with 10 men 10 men from five minutes they've scored on the sixth minute we scored on the sixth minute I didn't even pick up on that fact and then on 20 minutes we've actually taken the lead now they should have enough about them to actually make this difficult I don't think this is going to be easy but so far so good and not having a right back isn't proving too disastrous I'm sure Second yellow card would absolutely love that fact because he, I watched his FM21, a lot of his streams where he was playing in the African leagues and yeah he just developed this tactic that we go three one up uh, with no right backs four one up what is going on do we even need eleven men to win this league anymore now we're playing well uh, yeah so he'd love the old right back list in fact right back became almost a bit of a swear word in in his stream so <laughs> yeah. Who is it? Macanespi. I don't think I've actually got another right back to play when he's suspended. So we might actually have to go and dip in the market to to bring one in. I don't know if we want to go and just get a backup or whether we want to go and get a full-on car. They're making this twitchy now. Paul Dickov getting the goals. I don't know if he's got the third one. No, he didn't. Murray got the third one. Um, This isn't... Being 4-1 up, this is very much not going to plan. Maybe I need to make that defensive change but then part of me doesn't want to take away the attacking impact but then it's kind of gone anyway we don't have a defender on the bench we're gonna bring do you know what Turnbull can just play there he's a midfielder forward to right he's all I can do is a similar move so rather than waste a sub I'll just stick him there he might give us a bit of an attacking output from that right back spot who knows um, as we got about 15 minutes 10 minutes to go now can we hold on for the win no, we can't. Rufus Brevet did something. Was it an own goal? No, Brissett. Maybe I got mixed up with Brissett. And, oh, I hope we could snatch one then just to make it a, a win still. We got, we're got 4-1 up. But we've had 10 men for most of the match. So a 4 all draw. A draw isn't bad when I saw the red card that early. But once we went 4-1 up, I really hoped we could 
hold on there really so um a bit disappointing but we'll, we'll go again so we'll come back for the next game i think we'll do one more game of this episode and then we'll um we'll crack on uh with moving on for getting ready for episode four as we well that'll take us into about october ish so yeah we're kind of going along track a little bit i, I don't want this season each season to be too many episodes i think that's something i touched upon a little bit in the um episode yesterday before mill of billy bond sacked as mill manager i touched upon a little bit in the um video yesterday because i don't want it to be like 20 episodes for a season it's just ridiculous but yeah we'll come back for the next game okay so here we are we're back we're now currently away to bottom place york I don't know if they've got anyone in. They've got Neil Fenn on loan from Tottenham, I think. Yeah, Tottenham. Richard Cresswell, obviously went on to have a bit of a Premier League career. Anyone else we recognise? I don't think so. Mark Tinkler from Leeds. Okay. Jonathan Greenin, obviously went on to... 30? 30 in 1998. I think they might have got his... If it is him, I'm assuming they got his age wrong. So I know he played for, for York, did old um, Jonathan Greenin. Um, we have made a sign in at right back, so we'll have a look at him shortly. So we brought in Fabian Hoahing, who can play left back or right back, and we brought him in for 40k from PSV. Um, I've had him on different versions of the game, and so he's actually playing okay. Rufus Brevet is actually the one playing not so bad, so we'll switch that around when the suspension becomes an issue. Um, Tomlinson is going to come back in for Turnbull, but we are going to put Turnbull on the bench. Um, we do need to put a defender on the bench because we noticed that last game was a little bit out of place. And we've got Jim Quinn, no, sorry, Mick Quinn up front uh, on the bench as well as an option. So let's see what we can do against the bottom team, York. Hopefully we can grab a free, the three points here. We have dropped down to fifth in the league. So a win here would hopefully just push us up that little bit and just keep us in contention points wise with the... You know the teams that are going for the title we i think we need to consider ourselves one of the teams that's in for the title as we go one nil up on the 13th minute and i think that was conroy tomlinson back in the team grabs a goal i think conroy might have been involved um i don't know if he scored in the last game actually i don't didn't pick up his name did he score in any of those four goals hopefully he did at least get one because we need him to push on for those 30 goals we need him to keep oh, i was hoeing handballs he's booked in 26 minutes on his debut not the best debut so far, although we are winning and we haven't conceded. So in that regard, it's not so bad as Centurion plays a corner in. He's on, all our, he's on all our set pieces. He's a bit hit and miss, to be fair. He's got 14 set pieces, I think. Uh, set pieces 14, passing's 15, shooting's 18. So he should have... I don't know if there's a stat there I'm, I'm not thinking about to look at for as they equalise. Arenza parries it out straight to their striker. Was it Cresswell? No, Neil Fenn, our great at Tottenham player. As an Arsenal fan, that disgusts me. No end. As we go immediately straight back up the other end, Tomlinson scores another one. Oh, is that the same minute again? No, 48, 48 and 49. This is absolutely ridiculous. Mark Tinkler grabs... Oh my God, what is going on? The 51st minute. Oh, Jeff Stelling in the studio would be going absolutely bonkers at this. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to keep up to date. So we've got the 3-2 lead at the moment. Can we hold on? Can we build on? Can we build on it? Can Conroy grab one? We need Conroy to start chipping in. But we are going to make a few changes in a minute, I think. So it doesn't look... Conroy? I was just about to take him off for the mick, for the micker. I think I might have to. Oh, do I? He's got a goal now. I don't know. And he's had another chance. He looks on it now. We are going to make a change. We're going to put Turnbull on for Tomlinson. He is booked. Um, oh, do we... We're going to take off Michael Twist. We're going to go two up front, two behind. See if that does anything. I don't actually know what that will do for the, for the formation tactic. And it could bite us. I don't like changing when you're winning. Because it can make everything fall apart and you lose your shape and your discipline. I don't really know. But we hold on 4-2. Great result. And let's see what that does to the league as soon as it loads up. Come on, come on, come on. Do you know what, sometimes playing this game, it feels like it used to load quicker back in the day. Was my laptop, was my PC just more cutting edge at the time than my laptop is now? I don't I don't really know. I don't, it's surely not. We're talking, what, nearly 20 years ago? Over 20 years ago, I think, yeah. 22 years ago, 23 years ago, something like that, this came out. So I can't imagine my PC was better then. In fact, I don't even have a PC when this came out. I think I got a PC a few years later, to be honest. Um... 
let's have a look. So we are in second. Oh, two games in hand though. That's not bad. One of them will take us level. And the next one will take us. The draws is worrying, but that was from earlier in the season. We've still got seven wins. Only the one loss. Um, I can't remember who that was too now. Um, but yeah, we're doing all right. Uh, let's have a look at the goals. Oh, he's Carol's Conroy doing for goals now. 13. So he's practically halfway there to what we need him to get. So very pleased on that front. I'm, I've pop up the uh, I've popped up the challenge earlier in the episode. I'll try if I remember to edit in. I'll try and pop it up here now, just so you can see what I'm talking about and see how we're getting on. I'll try and do a little animation as well that we can tick off things as we go. But obviously we've got we've got Hyden Strom. We've ticked him off. Um, there's not too many others that we've ticked off yet. I don't think Hyden Strom and a Doncaster player. I think that's no because we haven't played him 20 times yet, so that doesn't count. So we are going to. I'm going to play on a little bit. We're going to get through. We're in October now. We're going to. I'm going to play through a bit of October. We did get the FA Cup draw as well, which is York again. Okay, interesting. Uh, hopefully we can put a few more goals in and keep a bit more of a tighter ship at the back. But yeah, I'm going to play through. We've got Burnley, Wickham, Northampton again in the windscreen. Shields, Chesterfield have just changed their manager. A few teams at the bottom there, but we're we're going to come back probably somewhere near november somewhere around here i don't think you can see my mouse on if it's recording it but somewhere around the sort of wigan gillingham oldham south end york game somewhere around there we're going to come back i think just to try and push through a little bit um we're going to try and sell a few of those players that are wanted we're going to try and drop their price and i'm going to try and get that left back in and then i think we're kind of content with where the team is hopefully a few of those sales will boost that money up a little bit because we obviously have just spent a bit more money now um, so we are edging closer to not being in um, net profit, as Jurgen Klopp like, and the Liverpool like to say. But we're getting close. So until next time. Um, oh, actually, if you're, like I say at the start, if you're new here, enjoyed the video, want to see more, please do drop a like. Please drop a sub to the channel. Um, I've actually had a few subs creep in on, and a few likes creep in on some of my old Championship Manager videos. So there is still an audience and there are people still finding me and seeing me. So anyone new and all that good stuff let me know you are enjoying it and you want to see some more any comments as well is always appreciated and i do try and get back to back to them when i can um and until next time i'll see you later take care